and uh, we are back and um, I'd like to uh, speak a bit regarding the shadow pictures of the events to come so then we understand that the uh, Torah is absolutely active ever since the time of Moses and the instructions are absolutely holy they came from a holy line of the Hebrews we understand there is only a holy language where the functions of the spirit there are performed we understand that the first Shilishim they came out from the first line of the Hebrews and those people they were functioned they were functioned in the spirit we also understand the main purpose of the Holy Land and we did also understand that the group that would be formed from the outside of the camp would be drawn in the camp they would be formed and taught and they would be having their senses exercised in Hebrew and they would go out to teach the other people outside and they would form another Holy Land so this is what the plan was however there is also the information regarding the shadow pictures of the prophetic events to come so then let's say if, if for instance if a person outside is stupid enough to believe that the Torah is obsolete so then let's uh, simply un come to the understanding where is your gifting first to have this authority of saying that the Torah was obsolete show in your own Bible where you would fit in this gifting from this power on high that you claim yourself that there is no more Torah where do you get your authority from to say so show it and then obviously comes the uh, silence of uh, stupidity on the side of those that do believe that the uh, Torah was obsoleted and then obviously they can't explain for instance in Hebrews chapter 10 and Shaul explaining for in the Torah there was the shadow of the prophetic events to come but wait a minute do they not believe that the Torah was obsoleted so what do you explain from this portion of it so what does it mean and then goes on therefore although the same sacrifices were done every year they were given and could never make perfect to those who gave them and then he explains where it came from he started with the tabernacle it was, would be obviously for those people coming into the camp for the teaching they would be teaching the services of the tabernacle would they be teaching the sacrifices of animals they would obviously cover the portion that there was a purpose for those animals and their dams but it was completed by Yahshua and in this case is speaking of the Holy of Holies would be Yahweh Yeshua because Yahshua is coming from myself as being a Goy from the outside of the camp because myself no priest in the Holy Temple however Yahshua said that we would be kings and priests but then obviously would have to be drawn in the camp first and then from there may Ruach Kodesh may want some people to become priests of the temple as a line of Levites because in Yahshua a person can be made holy to this point would be the best maybe the best would be from the line of the Levites because that's what they were set for but since let's say for instance after years and years and years of forming holy lands and holy lands and holy lands and holy lands it would be probably a shortage of Levites wouldn't it then it would be grafted in and given the honor of the goys outside as per the desire of Ruach Kodesh to make them Levites because they are in the Mashiach and Mashiach said they would be priests and kings would this be true? the main question is would they have enough Levites for the so many other holy lands around the world? probably not 
And the answer is certainly not. Could then obviously these people be set apart as being the line of the Levites? Then it would depend upon Ruah HaKodesh. Because Yahshua said they would be made kings and priests. But this is the absolutely power that's under the authority of Ruah HaKodesh. So we should not be concerned with it because when the uh, people are drawn to the camp, then the decision is made there. So moving on with the uh, understanding and then the sharing and then the uh, shadow of the great events to come. Great events to come. So then the prophetic events to come. And there are many of them. Let's say for instance from Bereshit there are pieces of it, bits and pieces that serves as a shadow of the future. The shower of sulfur that came down on Sodom and the cities of the plain. It is a shadow picture in the very future. When the vengeance comes. At the very last moment when Yahshua then shows up in the skies and then he takes his people back and he removes his people out of the earth and then a shower of sulfur comes down. It was the shadow picture of the first. Did not Shimon say the elements of the earth would be burnt completely? This is where it came from. The earth is not going to be destroyed by a nuclear explosion. There are, for instance, uh, portions in the uh, Revelation stating that a star would come down from heaven and destroy the third part of the earth. But the earth itself would not be destroyed by it, only a part of it. The rest is going to be incinerated. Because this is the shadow picture of the first. The cleansing from Yahweh, the Creator, is cleansing via the sulfur. As it was first given the example in Sodom and the cities of the plain. This is the first. And then the second is in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, gives the spring feast. And then the from uh, the first verse until the 21st verse gives the spring feast. The part of Yahshua that came as a servant. He would teach them how to be servants. His own people. And then the guys, obviously, the guys who would do the service for the people of the camp. They would make sure they would have enough provisions, they would have enough water, they would have animals, they would have what to eat. So they would then prepare another group to go out and form another holy land. This was the objective. And then the 22nd verse is the time of the Gentiles. And it has handed. We are in the very, very, very end of the 22nd verse. And then starting then the preparation for the vengeance. It would be from the 23rd verse up to the end of the 23rd chapter. This is the Torah vengeance. So that's another portion of the scriptures of stating of the events to come. But then you ask a regular person that doesn't believe in the Torah, what does it mean shadow of the great events to come? And then they get caught. Boy, what does it mean? And then comes, so you don't believe that there is a Torah that's valid yet. Ah, the Torah was obsolete. Okay. Uh, what do you think then the prophetic events to come? Ah, huh? don't know, uh, Shaul was speaking of some sort of a prophetic event. Yeah, but it is not the uh, shadow of the Torah? Don't you believe that the Torah was obsoleted? So is then Shaul speaking an obsoleted uh, section of it that would come in the future? Does it make sense to you? And then big eyes, you know, eyebrows, uh, they seem to go up. Because then they found out they are ridiculous. And they begin to wonder, is it true that the Torah was obsolete? Um, it certainly wasn't. If Shaul is explaining very plainly that the prophetic events to come is related with the Torah, how would you believe the Torah was obsolete? You would put a stamp of stupidity on your own forehead. 
also meant the Torah is active. That's why Shaul was very specific and he said in chapter 10 of Hebrews, for in the Torah there is the shadow of the great events to come and was a shadow of the great prophetic events to come. To come, to come is future. He's referencing to the Torah as what it was prior of the coming of Yahshua. And then later he goes on, not the substance of the events themselves. And then he explained what it means of these events to come. Not the substance of the events themselves. Therefore, although the same sacrifices were very precisely done every year and those sacrifices were given but they could never be made perfect to those who gave them and then he returns to the tabernacle because always referencing to the tabernacle as the new holy land but uh, much more is coming up and, and this is kind of a clears away a lot of incompetence of people out there that for some reason they have this stupidity in their minds the Torah is obsolete where they are confused with is the Takanot Masim but we talk about it later